Okay, we're going to keep moving. And so for our next presentation, Dr. Sean Donahue is going to present uh, data on vertical Kestenbaum procedures. I have no uh, relevant financial conflicts of interest here. I do want to give special recognition to a couple of medical students at Vanderbilt and, and to Dr. Morrison who helped me put this together. I wanted to talk a little bit about the compensatory role of abnormal head positions to blunt infantile nystagmus. For horizontal plane, face turn to the left, face turn to the right, Kestenbaum and others have, have had extensive work in demonstrating the effectiveness of that. But there's really very little in the literature on the pitch plane, in other words, chin up or chin down head positions, and how do you best correct them? Obviously, chin up and chin, head, chin down head positions have to be treated differently because you need to operate on different muscles. This case could help tee up this discussion. This is a three-year-old boy that I saw whose parents noticed a chin down head position about one year ago. They had noticed nystagmus at six months of age that appeared to be congenital in nature, but this nystagmus appeared to resolve concomitant with the uh, ch development of the chin down head position. He came in to see us. This child had relatively good visual acuity. His afferent system was essentially normal. He did have a 30 degree chin down head position with horizontal nystagmus in primary position and in down gaze, and there was a null uh, of this horizontal nystagmus on up gaze. He had no significant strabismus and no refractive error. So I want to talk about the best way to manage these patients. There was very little in the literature when I started doing this. Ed Wilson and Rick Saunders had talked about three patients who had had superior rectus recessions with anterior uh, anteriorizations of the inferior oblique. About 2004, uh, Steve Archer, Monty Del Monte, and their group uh, had 11 patients with chin down head positions that they primarily did a stepped approach. They'd do the superior rectus first, and then if need be, do something to the inferior oblique. And then this uh, third case was a, a series was in, in 2009. As part of, as part of this uh, uh, symposium and some, some of the work these medical stu students were doing, they reviewed our literature at, at Vanderbilt and our work with, with patients over the last 20 years who've had surgery for abnormal head positions in different planes. And uh, we had 147 of them. Most of them had horizontal, had horizontal face turns or, or, um, or uh, head positions, but 31 had a pitch plane abnormal head position, chin up or chin down. 28 of those had two-month follow-ups. 22 of these patients had chin down head positions, and I want to talk about those today. When I first started in 1995, again, with very little in the literature, I just did not like the concept of weakening both elevators. And so I started doing superior rectus recessions with an inferior rectus muscle resection. So I did eight millimeter recessions of both superior rectus muscles, eight millimeter resections of both inferior rectus muscles. About 10 years later, I just anecdotally felt I was starting to see a lot of these patients come back with a residual chin down head position. And I also had one patient who developed a large V pattern esotropia postoperatively. So in 2008, I switched and started doing bilateral inferior oblique myectomies and large superior rectus muscle recessions. In other words, weakening substantially both elevator muscles, uh, uh, eight, eight millimeters, and doing them simultaneously, not sequentially, as had been discussed in the past. So I wanted to talk a little bit about the results from these tw 22 cases. There were 11 that had superior rectus muscle recessions bilaterally with simultaneous inferior rectus resections, both of approximately eight millimeters. Of those, when we looked at them, seven of the patients had their head positions corrected but four of them had substantial undercorrections. What was more bothersome, however, was the induction of, of a horizontal strabismus, a large V pattern esotropia in five of those patients, three who had a, a, v, a v pattern and two had an, a non-accommodative uh, esotropia developed that required a, additional eye muscle surgery. In contrast, when I weakened both elevators, I also had um, uh, seven of the 11 have a complete correction. Four had a mild undercorrection, but not nearly the substantial undercorrection that I had seen when I weakened, uh, weakened the superior rectus with, with a resection of the inferior rectus. And only one patient had, had strabismus. So when we compared the unfavorable outcome rate between the uh, R&R &R and the elevators, it was substantially, substantially uh, 
better for weakening both elevators, and the reoperation rate uh, was also was also better in patients who weakened both elevators. So I really have concluded and have changed my, my practice pattern as a result of this, and I now weaken both elevators uh, simultaneously as the uh, as a preferred position for, for chin downhead positions. Thank you, Dr. Donahue.